Welcome, welcome. So glad to have you joining the live stream this evening. Episode 19 of the Paint Party live stream. So glad to have you here. If you are a regular, you know the routine. Give me a holler out in the comments wherever you are watching. Say hello. Um, let me know where you're watching. We are live streaming tonight on YouTube primarily, but also we uh, cross stream to Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, and yeah, I think that's it. Uh, so glad to have you. Lola, always first, always on time. Thank you so much. It's a joy to have you. I've really enjoyed the, the paintings you've done recently on your Instagram I've um, enjoyed watching those progress, so thanks for sharing those with the world. Um, welcome, everybody. The theme, or kind of what we do, it's kind of open house. People pop in, pop out. I paint a different, uh, a different painting every weekend, and I chat with you and kind of talk about what I'm learning, what's going on through the process. I started about six months ago uh, at the beginning of, well, kind of midway through quarantine. It was probably July, June or July, um, after we'd been in quarantine for a couple of months and I needed something to keep my sanity, started painting, found that I love it. It's slowly taking over more and more of my life, which is a good thing in a good way. Um, and so I am finding other things that I can let go of or find ways to paint, uh, more time to paint, primarily letting go or trying to let go of a lot of lazy time spent on social media, Netflix, probably like most everybody. So um, glad to have you all joining the paint party. Again, if you're coming into the room, there are several of you here, please give me a shout out wherever you are in the comments, uh, wherever, whatever platform you're watching on, say hello, let me know you're in the room. Um, and, uh, and we'll, uh, get this party started. So if you were here last week or those of you who are here last week, you know that we did uh, the painting of the lion. And so if you're connected with me on um, Instagram, you saw the progress photos of that painting. And then the final, I did some additional detail work on the lion. But as I do each week, I like to kind of show you what I've been up to. So this is the final um, the final painting, the, the final version of the lion. So it has a signature and a date. So I guess that means it's done. This one actually surprised me a little bit. Um, it was better than I thought I had the talent to do. So it turned out really nicely. I'm, I'm happy with it. I think I may actually, uh, give this one a frame and maybe keep it. So that's what we did last weekend. Um, high bar to set for this weekend. So we'll see what we can do. Um, I never really set out most of my paintings previous to this. Most of you will know were landscapes. Um, and so have started doing some animals and we're going to do that again tonight uh, and just see where it goes and uh, def definitely stretching me beyond my capacity and my skill set. So um, let's go ahead and jump right in. I'm trying to get my openings more concise. Um, I noticed from previous live streams they would drag on for 15-20 minutes depending if I have lots of paintings to show. So um, I just shared on Facebook. Thanks so much April. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks so much for all you did with the Welcome to Arkansas Facebook group. That's really exciting um, to see so many people coming together. I was referring somebody to the group today so I'm excited to see how that continues to grow. Um, for people who are moving to Arkansas or maybe interested in moving to Arkansas, I think that's a real great uh, community service. So I appreciate it. Appreciate you uh, for what you do, your friendship as well, and uh, supporting my endeavors. All right, let's move y'all a little closer here to my little my little captain's chair, and we will get started. Let me turn you on. Uh, turn over to this camera and that way I can adjust my other camera without making y'all sick. Oh, well, you'll see, you see the adjusted camera. Let me also throw up the reference photo so you can, 
Hey there, Daniel. So glad to see you. Uh, I'm behind the reference photo. It's <laughs> so good to see you, buddy. I appreciate it. Um, I think I appreciate you stopping by. I know it's right in the kind of hitting the dinner hour for you there on the West Coast. So thanks for taking a few minutes to pop in and say hello. And Chase, welcome Chase, thank you. Does the bird have a name? I, he doesn't. Um, he is Reference Photo Parrot. Uh, so what do you think we should name him? We can definitely do that this evening. What, what do y'all think his name should be? Let me, I am actually gonna shrink this up a little bit in your corner so, and then switch back. There we are. What do you think his name should be? The parrot. Uh... Make you sick and throw up came in successive sentences. <laughs> Tomato, welcome to the show. Good to see you again. <laughs> I always appreciate my, my Twitch peeps popping into the show. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good to see you, good to see you, good to see you. Sophie. Steve Jr. Yeah, probably not. I, I always said God doesn't trust me with animals or children, so I have no children um, and choose to have no animals. Although I have plenty of, of uh, nieces and nephews and fur nieces and nephews, so I guess that's, that's good for me. All right, so tonight what we're doing, um, obviously you can see the, the parrot on your screen and on my screen as well. Um, we're going to do this parrot, let me actually, just a second, sorry, I'm adjusting, oh, I did it the wrong way, just a second, I'm trying to adjust my tripod here so that I can give y'all a little bit better view of the canvas more over my shoulder but that means that the tripod is like right in my lap so um did you have any pets growing up i did actually we had a cat named rico and um i had some hamsters i think when i was a kid and some back in the 80s late 70s early 80s it was a cool thing to have those uh hermit crabs so we had some crabs, I think. Um, that sounds terrible. We had crabs growing up. We had some, some hermit crabs as pets, probably a goldfish. So um, Chase says, hey, Daniel. <laughs> I guess you guys are on the same uh, comment thread, so you can see each other's comments. But uh, yeah, so I'm not opposed to animals. I love animals. We have three or four cats that, are, that belong to our building out in the parking lot here. And um, I just am, I know I'm selfish and lazy and, um, don't want to get out of bed to take an animal out or to take care of an animal. I don't want them in my space. I don't want to have to feed them. I don't want to have to, so it's more about my selfishness and my life, <laughs> my life choices. So, um, all right. So we're going to start on this parrot. If you see, uh, I think what we're going to do, similar to how we did with the lion last weekend, we're going to do the background actually first. That's the one thing I learned with the lion. I want to lay in the background first. I'm going to try to do a gradient. I think I'm going to do kind of an off uh, tan cream brown kind of gradient background. I think that will cause the blue and green and, and this kind of um, gray color of his beak and the yellow to really pop out. So... Um, let's lay that in and then we'll work on the parrot. As you can see, or may be able to see, I'll hold this up hopefully closer to the screen. Um, I did a rough sketch of the, of the reference. So I have basically a few rough ideas where to lay the um, specifics of the animal. In order to do this, I know I mentioned it last week and I heard the name of this tool. Um, I'm trying to remember. I think it starts with an S, but I have a, pla a plastic one. Um, this is a device that allows me to get ratios correct. So I can measure 
on the animal, like for example, the distance from the center of the eye to the beak, and then I can come down here on the other side and copy it so it's more um, more correct or more in proportion. So um, I used this device, and this has really been a lifesaver. The goal or the reason to use this, this was original. These were, uh, I think, devices that are used still perhaps in architecture. Um, but what this does is it trains your eye to eventually become a, uh, a better drawer. So I don't have a training in art. I don't have a training in drawing. And so this helps me to develop the ability to, to eyeball um, more correctly. So I'm finding that I found that worked really well for the lion. So did the same thing with the parrot. Um, Lola. Lola recommends we call him Pablo. I like Pablo. Pablo is a good name. Pablo the parrot. Pablo. We could, we could do Pablo's. Pablo it is. All right. Pablo the parrot. I had hamsters, fish, a turtle, something called a skink, and homing pigeons. Homing pigeons. That's amazing. A skink. That is unique. That is definitely unique. All right. I wonder. Okay. We'll just do. I'm wondering, though. When we do our background, again, I want to do kind of a brown gradient, light to dark. I'm wondering if I should do what I'm pondering as a child of the 90s. I want to say, are you thinking what I'm thinking, Pinky? So what I'm thinking is maybe start with a lighter, more reddish brown. Let us see. Let us see. And then go to a darker bluish brown. So we have a lighter, we have kind of a, I don't know if that is going to be a good thing. I don't think that's what I want. So sometimes you don't know until you just get in and mix it. What I was doing here is mixing it's kind of turned it like almost a pinkish brown but i think i want the cooler like bluer brown so um starting i'm thinking starting up here going down the gradients darker as we go um so yeah that's that's the thought that's the thought we'll see that's what's fun about this journey I don't really know what I'm doing. I mean, I do, but I'm learning. And all right. So what I'm doing, if you can see on my palette, I'm doing a rough gradient of the different colors and then I'll mix them as I go and kind of blend them together. Um, but I do think I want to mix in a little um, ultramarine blue which gives us a darker rich brown almost a gray brown. So we'll mix some of that in. We'll see how we go. Okay, so see how by adding the blue then it really darkens this brown um, so that's kind of what we're going for.
<laughs> oh my gosh, your mom's going to freak when she sees what you did with her plate. Fortunately, Tomato, I live not with my mother. And I literally, when I started painting, I didn't want to spend a whole bunch of money on supplies before I really knew what I was doing. So I literally went to Walmart and bought this convenient Better Homes and Gardens uh, if you guys can read that. Better Homes and Gardens plate. It's kind of a ceramic white plate, which white is not probably the best color for mixing paint, but um, it has worked well. has a nice little lip on it, as you can see, so water and paint doesn't leak off. And it was, I think, $1.50 or something. Ridiculous. Um, probably made by children in a sweatshop in Asia unfortunately, but uh, yeah, not my mother's plate, so she's not upset at all, and I can rinse it and put it in the dishwasher, and it cleans very easily. Uh, hey, Ethan, so good to have you. Thanks for popping in. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Okay, guys, let's get started, ladies and gents, and everyone in between. All right, let's lay on some color. We're just putting the first draft of the color on kind of a creamy brown light. And as I go, I'm just following the paint that I mixed on my palette and mixing darker as I go, so we will start laying that in around our parrot and taking it darker and then blending up so that hopefully it gives us a nice background around the parrot. This is a low budget show. Well, Bob, you are not wrong. Hello, Mr. G, so good to have you in the room. Always appreciate you stopping by. It is definitely low budget. At least you didn't say low class, so I appreciate the kindness. Yeah, it's definitely low budget, perhaps even a little low class, but not quite. So let's do, okay. This is the challenge now, y'all. We're going around this beak. Whoops. I had a good blend earlier. Now it's kind of starting to dry already, so. I just want to get it so there's no hard edges to my painting. And the other important thing about backgrounds that I learned with the lion painting last weekend is it's important to get the right colors, especially working from a, when I'm working from a um, reference photo, to get a good color that is a good background to the subject so that the subject stands out. So that's what I'm trying to make sure that all the places where, for example, the, the yellow will be and the blue down below here will really stand out. All right, let's take this all the way down, take it around the edge of the canvas to make sure we have coverage. Give this guy a little frame. Little frame. Okay, now let's blend this in. Should we go darker down below? I think maybe. I kind of like the idea of like. Okay.
Okay. Sorry, I'm blocking you all for a minute. I am left handed and I'm trying to get this done quickly before it all starts to dry. So, okay, we have the basics in. Should we bring, what do you all think? Do we need a we need it a little. Lighten up this as we go. OK, I don't want to go too dark up here, but I don't want it. I don't want I want this to be the the parrot to be the uh, I want him to be the focal point, not the background. So I don't want to draw the eye too far up um, or mess up that. Um, and I don't want to overthink this. So we'll see. We can always go back in if we have to and repaint the background which we may want to darken, may decide we want to darken the whole thing. So, yeah, sympathy lefties, we are the rulers of the world. We just let the majority think they are in control. We must like low budget, low class. We keep coming back. Yeah, I appreciate it, Lola, or I would not have a... It would be a very lonely live stream if y'all weren't here. Back at the landscapes, we put the bright areas the light first i see some bright above pablo's head and behind the background here seems fairly dark um i don't plan to put Ooh, i put my finger right into that that's awful just notice i don't plan to put additional dark into or additional light um one of the things i learned is that um putting especially last week when i did the lion I put in the um, background last and what ended up happening then was it was so dark that it was difficult to blend it or it was it would have been easier to put it in first so that's why I started with the background here this time um, I don't plan to put any light any additional light in the background if we see after a bit i'll probably put another coat because the canvas soaks so much of the um soaks in so much of the paint that i probably will need another coat at which at which time we can probably fine tune some of this but yeah that's the the plan we shall see so this is what we have. If I move it a little bit closer, you can kind of see kind of a bluish. It has a bluish tint because I was down here working and then I came back up. So I'll probably want to redo that. It's not perfect. You can see where it's starting to soak into the canvas here. And so it's not very pretty. So we will let it fully dry and then we'll probably go back and do another coat of the background. So until that time, let us take a look at laying in the main features of the of the parrot. So if you were here last weekend, you'll remember that we did a, um, we're working, I am working to learn, specifically to learn values and to lay in values. You'll notice over my shoulder that I have a copy of the reference photo that's black and white. Notice the darkest values of this painting are where you would expect them to be right at the cuff of the neck where that bluish green feather is green feathers obviously the these i don't know what this the skin under the eyes um and then the beak 
is a little bit lighter in value. Um, and then some of the shadows on the wings. Um, but those are the things we're going to be looking at to lay in. And then we want to block in basically blocks of color. Now this is going to be a challenge for me just because there are sirens in the background. Can you all hear the police or fire? I live down the street from a fire station. So when there's an emergency, they uh, deploy from my neighborhood. So the benefits of and the excitement of downtown living, even in little old Little Rock, Arkansas. So, all right, this is going to be a challenge, I was saying, because these colors are different than those that I have blended in the past. And getting the colors to really jump off this, uh, this background will be really interesting. These are, you know, the oranges, oranges, yellows. So, um, in this case, I want to lay in the, in each section, kind of the darkest values. So I think I want to, let me try to mix a, uh, a blue for his, the blue of his, uh, feathers see if I can get relatively close to this kind of that aquatic beautiful aquatic blue um, we shall see I'm gonna take some cerulean blue and some phthalo blue and try to see what I can come up with so Actually, beginner's luck, I think I got pretty close to what I want. So, um, I know you all can't see, but look, uh, so this is a little cerulean blue and phthalo blue mixed together, um, pretty darn close to um, what, what we have in the reference picture. So this will be actually the shadow blue, I think under his, when I look at the, uh, when I look at this painting. So now the goal is, where is my, okay, I'm going to take um, this brush. I think I want to do a On the topic of noise, do you paint best when it's quiet, music playing, sirens? Uh, typically, if I'm here by myself, um, if you all aren't here with me, I will often um, play YouTube videos, uh, typically like audiobooks or lectures or things that have, you know, that I don't have to pay terrible attention to, but use a different side of my mind. So if I'm doing the painting, which is more creative, I may have an audiobook or something going in the background um, or you know, some other, what have I been listening to recently? Um, yeah, sometimes just audiobooks or YouTube videos where I don't have to normal, n at least pay attention to a lot of the, what's going on in the background. Um, I don't, I'm not one of those people that's so concentrated that I have to have silence, um, at least not at this point in my painting. Uh, there are times when I do, like, I'll shut off the audio so that I can really focus. And you guys will notice that, or may have noticed too, also, over the weeks, usually as I get into the painting, like right now, kind of laying in this, um, this undercoat, it's not terribly important. I mean, it's a very important, um, like to the process but it's not like there's not I don't have to like be super cautious um and so I can lay in this without taking a lot of I can talk walk and chew gum at the same time so to speak um And I probably should have started, now that I'm thinking about it, when I actually stop to think, I probably should have <laughs> started with the yellow 
um, and the brighter colors just because the blue is going to cover everything um, and it's going to be harder to butt the yellows and the lighter colors up against this blue but we'll make it work the good thing is animals are it's not like perfect lines um, in an animal these feathers kind of flow in and out of each other so yeah it's a we'll get it just trying to basically cover this canvas this first run so let me now up here I want to be a little more careful so the basic shape is the same want to overlap the brown just a tad And I'm kind of just doing all kinds of different brush strokes here to um, so that it helps to kind of look like feathers or fur or something. I don't want it to be too perfect so that as I lay multiple layers down on it, it will help. The texture will actually come through a little as well. Okay. And I think, so here's the other thing I'm learning as an artist, um, and one of the things I'm playing around with that, I'm, that worked really well um, with the lion because one of my because the uh, reference photo was um, was partially his face was partially in the shadow so if you remember last week I decided to put the whole half of his face in the shadows remember that um, those of you that were here and I decided that I was going to make it look like basically just his one left eye was coming out of the shadow and all of the light would be on the right side of his face. But I really wanted it to look like he was looking at you. Um, and so what I'm gonna try to do in this painting is have the light focus here, even though this picture was obviously taken during the day and the whole thing is pretty much evenly lit. I'm gonna try to do most of the light focus, the brightest, most saturated colors up here. So you can tell maybe perhaps a little bit that I'm darkening some of this undercoat here. Um, actually might bring in some ultramarine blue, which is a darker purple blue, um, to kind of coat down here. Um, because a lot of the detail down here, I want to be kind of lost or blended in. And I want the, the main focus to be right there of the light. So this almost will look like it's in shadow. That's the intent, at least. So let's see what we can create. I figure if I tell you all this ahead of time and it actually happens, then I look like, a, like somewhat of a genius. If it doesn't, just don't tell anybody. If it works because as you all know I am learning as well I am learning this as I go trying to uh, pick up more skill as I can watching real experts or people 
maybe not real experts, but people a little more experienced on with YouTube videos that, okay, now I made a noob mistake. I need to let, let this dry because I'm just moving this paint around. I'm not really, I'm picking up paint and so this isn't working all I want. So I'm going to let this dry, putting down a good coat. I'll have to come back to that. So, but it's dark. So we got the basic color. Did you hear about the new blue pigment that just got discovered? Yellow not blue is pretty vibrant. I will have to check it out. I had heard something, I think, um, but I haven't, I haven't hunted it down and I haven't, I'll maybe have to Google it after this. Check it out. Mr. Daniel. Okay. Now, let's try to do a, see if we can, I'm running out of space on my palette though because I mixed so broadly, but I think we can do kind of an under color this green, I think I want to do, actually I can take some of this bluish brown. Remember what we said about, uh, about bluish brown, um, we didn't say about, what we said about mixing um, colors all together so that you kind of have consistency with your Painting, that's what I'm going to try to do. We'll see how it works. Because um, I want to go in and do kind of this yellow-green blending area. I'm going to take this kind of dark greenish blue and see if I can mix in some of this aqua blue and a green and create an undertone color that we can lay some highlights on. And I think it's going to work. So. Let's just go in there. And we'll blend along the edge some additional okay I'm gonna come in here All right, and I'm coming in to kind of just highlight the darker edge. Whoops, I may have to wait till this dries. I was going to try to put darker, mix this darker blue I had with it, but I don't know that it's going to work. This light. Oh, it might. Put some shadow already into this. On the edge. We'll see. We'll see how it turns out. Okay. Alrighty. Let's 
funny. I think I watch on my software. So I think at one point we had probably at the beginning like 10 or 12 people and we settled back to about six. And I think there are six of us on the live stream right now. So glad y'all have, oh, we just jumped up to nine. Welcome to the new folks popping in. We are working on this parrot, laying in kind of base colors. All right, so notice in the reference photo, your darkest, again, your darkest colors are here. I think what I wanna do is go lay this blue, kind of purple blue uh, undertone in. So I'm going back to my ultramarine blue and brown. Mix that again. And let's see. This is almost black, so we really need ultramarine blue. as dark as we can. Because there's no, often, very, very rarely is there a pure black in nature. Because anything that appears black is just absence of reflection of light. And if you can see it, even though our eyes interpret it as black, it's really not. I know that's a little bizarre, but it's true. So let's put this in here, right up against there. I think actually I'm going to go back to my smaller brush just to make sure I have some better control of this. And I'm gonna put some this is kind of a grayish blue actually color that we're doing. When I look at the values, my values start blending right in here. So I'm going to put in some lighter values here as we go around. And then I'm going to take a little bit of yellow, oh, or a lot bit of yellow. I'll show you what I just did on my palette. I need like a dot of this, like literally a dot. I don't even know if you can see that, a dot of yellow. And I unloaded with all of that. So we just need a little green. I mixed with the blue. And I'm going to lighten my values out here a little bit as we blend into this. And we can do the same over here, kind of blend into these where the yellow blends into the blue. I can some here actually 
We'll just keep putting some highlights as we go there. Lighten this up a little bit. Okay, I don't want to go too much into detail work. All right, y'all, let's take a, so you can see a closer look. I laid in, here this will be mostly in shadow. This will be the highlight right around here. And so I'm putting in relatively accurate blocking, but down here, I'm going to do the same here where it's darker into the darkness or darker into the shadow so that it draws the eye up to his face. That's the intent. Let us see how it works. I was hoping I would get this all blocked in within an hour. It doesn't look like it, but let's see what we can do. We might be able to get most of it. Um, so let's mix. Um, if we're looking at the crest here, kind of this green or orange, it's almost like an orange yellow. So I'm not sure how this will work. What I think I'm going to do is try to do a little bit of mostly yellow, maybe. Trying something like a yellow brown or yellow. And I'm using a little yellow ochre to darken, but I really think there's needs to be definitely some orange or red brought in. It's definitely a reddish yellow because it's kind of sh shadowed on this side of his. So I think that works. I'm bringing in some burnt sienna actually. If you see, so here, I don't know if you can see it, but basically I'm mixing the, the medium yellow with kind of a burnt sienna. So it gives me kind of that reddish yellow. And that's the color I think we're going to use for him. Okay, now let's see. Let's take it in there. Let's see, we're going in. With yellow, we can be a little more aggressive because the yellow is so translucent. Look at up against here. See how the blue and green shows through because the yellow is so translucent. So we need to just block in the color right up against the, and we'll have to do several layers of this, but that's fine because that will give us texture of feathers. Um, we don't have to be super careful with this because it's, again, so translucent that it's not gonna cover the first time. Just gives us a basic idea. Um, and I'm realizing I messed up that
I'm remixing some of this dark bluish brown or bluish purple black color again. So that I can go in and around the face I need some. I needed to bring this up higher. I actually needed to bring this around. Um, let's see. I think that's going to be. I may need to put some. Yeah, I may need to put some. Uh, I'm not going to put the detail in yet. But while I'm doing that, I can do this beak. See, this is where I was concentrating a little bit more, and <laughs> I get silent automatically. Daniel, you were asking if I like noise. Yes, until like something like this, where I was like concentrating too much, not too much, but more than. All right, this is the fun part of the of the painting where it starts to like the major blocking is in and oh it's like oh, okay now I recognize this shape and this animal this is the fun part when it starts coming off the canvas like this so what we want to do is I want to put in some a little bit yellow mostly white maybe a little bit of red what I'm trying to do is to um, or will try to do is the eye so I'm going to take some color and I'm going to blot in this beast's eye. Uh, 
Okay, we got the rough eye. And then I want to do a... I may have to go change my water. You all know that about this time in, I often go change my water, but I have a blue in my... My water is mostly blue, which is the dominant color I've been using, as you can imagine, or it's the most, yeah, it's dominant, most powerful and most whatever. So um, trying to see here, I think I want kind of a, I'm mixing the final thing I want to lock in is the uh, the white around the uh, eyeball. So what I'm actually doing to block it in is I am doing mixing a kind of creamy brown, which I don't know if it really shows. It kind of looks white there. Um, but it's actually kind of red because there's a couple of reasons because the shadows actually are tinted red the reflected light but what this also does is that it brings warmth around these cool blues and greens even though it's subtle from a color theory it will stand out and then what we'll do is we will this will allow us to go over this undercoat with um, with white highlights or lighter highlights to give the kind of so it'll feel sort of three dimensional. Okay, I'm fairly pleased with this, I think. What do y'all think? And we got it just in an hour, basically. Relatively relatively set. Um, the final thing I want to do before I, just so that I don't forget, I want to actually tone down this yellow. So I want to see, and actually, which is think gonna work. Let's put some darker putting another layer kind of over here. And I'm taking a little bit of the blue. This is all experimentation. I'm taking a little bit of this blue, this dark blue, and mixing it here. And then I'm going to bring that down here so that it's almost a dark brown down here and blends into the dark blue. 
again because I want the focus to be up there and so I want to bring shadows down away from the face so this will help me start to make those decisions of am I right in this am I wrong and I think I'm right because I'm liking what's happening here so I darkened this compared to the uh, to the reference and I darkened this so it looks like it's in shadow and the background is shadow so it is or, or you know gradient so this is darkest when I got down here like this brown and this brown this is a little more warm it's reddish this is more a little blue so it's blending oh I shouldn't be touching that because it's coming off there um, but it almost blends right across so that's what I'm doing artistically that's my goal is so that this really pops off the canvas and the light and the viewer is drawn to the parrot's face that is what I am intending you are natural thanks so much Tasha Natasha I'm so glad to see you I'm grateful you popped in thanks to Gary again for stopping by school to pick up those notes um, I was in class but I'm appreciative of you guys doing that all right everybody so let me switch my camera talk to you and say okay what I am going to do now is I'm going to take this gross thing and rinse it out and get new water so that we can start doing some of the more detail work, which is going to be the fun work. Um, I'm also going to refill this because I am parched and I need to stay hydrated. And because, not because, but I, I was fortunate as a teacher to get the first um, shot of the coronavirus vaccine yesterday. So if any of you haven't had it, as soon as you're able, um, this is just my personal um, advocacy, please do. It was faster than a flu shot, less painful than a flu shot, and um, I did have a little bit of a headache after, um, but I took some uh, acetaminophen um, and was able to sleep and have been fine today. There's a little tenderness if I push on my arm. Um, but as soon as you can do that, definitely encourage you to do it. So that's my little, um, my little, uh, rant. But anyway, I hope more and more of us will have that opportunity as capacity increases. I'm very encouraged that we're going in the right direction. Last week, the average weekly seven day average rolling, I'm kind of a nerd and watch all the the uh, federal updates of what's going on now that we have them. Um, and so they, uh, the last seven days have given 1.2 million shots per day. Um, and of course the goal, I think the new administration had said they wanna get 100 million shots in the first 100 days. So obviously that's a million a day. So um, we're already um, exceeding that if we can continue that and um, hopefully as they smooth out some of the logistics and planning I know now they're giving every state a three-week kind of uh, rolling estimate of how many shots they're gonna get every week so it'll be easier to schedule clinics around the states so I'm hopeful that we can quickly get to 1.5 or even 1.8 million a day um, anyway I'm hopeful in the middle of all this uncertainty we've been through. Um, did I get Moderna or Pfizer? I got Pfizer, although I have a friend who got Moderna. And I think the difference basically is you wait an extra week to get the second dose with Moderna. Um, I know there's a little bit, scientifically there are differences, but they are roughly the same technologies. Um, and so well, Pfizer was just what our clinic at school, what they gave us, um, what they had. And so... We will get our second shot. I got it yesterday, which was what, the 29th? Um, and my second one should be February 19th. So, 
All right, I'm going to run and do this, y'all, and I will be right back. I'm back. I'm back. Clean water. Yay. Clean drinking water. Yay. I almost poured, um, I have filtered water and I almost poured it into my, into my, uh, paint jaw. That's not a good plan. Okay. Now let us continue and get this show on the road. So let me switch y'all back to here. Bring y'all in close again. Okay, there. I'm pretty pleased. So if I hold it up close, you can kind of see where we are um, with the rough layer. And even just that time, um, this is a little tacky down here, but it, uh, it dries very quickly. So now we want to go start laying in layers and laying in some uh, details. And... So, let us, what do you think, um, I think what I want to do is start laying in some of the detail around the face, excuse me, specifically because, um, if I don't get kind of these lines, I, I don't know what's happening on the face, whether those are like feathers. Um, I've never been close enough to a live parrot to figure that out, <laughs> but um, I want to come in there and actually we'll go in and see if we can draw in some of those details. Um, mix an almost black. Take a look at what we can get. Pretty dark, pretty dark. Dark as possible. Okay. Let's see what we can do with this. It's pretty dark. Kind of a bluish. I don't know if this is dark enough. 
y'all can tell me. It's hard to judge on my so we want to start kind of putting in some of these details. Let's see. So we have here is Actually, I think we need to bring his little beak up further, and that's perfect. So we'll draw some, we'll come like right, I think right in here. And kind of draw along these lines. Oh, I was asking, Natasha says these are, so these are tiny feathers. This is good to know. They look, I mean, they look a bit like tiny feathers, but I, I never, they also look like they could be little folds of skin, but they run right into the feathers here. So that makes sense. Um, so let's go. We'll see. Uh, thank you, Anna. Um, actually, yeah, I started. Um, actually, I started, I think, in end of May or June, because I, I remember we were quarantined um, first, but not quarantine, but like in the end of school year, because I was still teaching. And then after a couple of months, I was just like going a little stir crazy because school was out and I needed something to not lose my, that I could do. And like, so I didn't lose my mind, although I may have still be struggling <laughs> Uh, but this definitely, I, I do absolutely think this has helped my mental health, like just having something that isn't the news every day or isn't, um, that I can do that isn't just Netflix or, you know, whatever. This is, this painting has really not, I wouldn't say saved my life, but has definitely been helpful as I, as I have navigated this unprecedented, as they all say, uh, pandemic. So, yeah. So, we'll see. <laughs> You're very kind. Um, you know, it's interesting. This is, as I go, have gone through this, I'm doing it really, I mean, I enjoy the hobby and everything, but it's also very much a um, experiment, kind of a almost pseudo, not really academic experiment, of course, but it's this experiment of learning a new skill because I really, truly had no skill. Like, I have no 
um, a building skill. I don't think I have any particular special talent. Um, uh, but it's really interesting to approach it this way and learn a new skill as I kind of break down week by week new challenges. It's really an exercise in um, problem solving and testing things, testing hypotheses and and figuring things out as I go, trying things that work, things that don't. And so it's it's quite rewarding, yes. Especially if you could see my my first things, my first painting. One of the things I wonder if I should do like this spring and summer is go back to some of those early paintings I did and like repaint them with what I know now and see what what a difference that would make. It would be really interesting, I think, from my perspective to see like how some of these paintings are different based on my experience now and my understanding and my skill level now. Ah, <laughs> you're too kind. I am thinking, um, I was telling my mom, cause she's like, is this like gonna be a money making thing at some point? And I'm like, well, I don't really want it to be. Like I, I want, I mean, if someone's like here, Here's six thousand dollars. Yes, I'll sell you a painting, but like, but I thought of like doing some prints. Um, if there are certain paintings that become popular, um, right now I'm kind of on a kick with, uh, as you as you all are seeing, um, learning to you know painting wildlife, um, but I think at some point. I may do some prints because those are, it would be a relatively inexpensive way that I could do these um, and for the amount of time because obviously these take several hours and then I do more work on them after the live stream. Okay, now I got to stop and and pay attention, y'all. So, par pardon moi. I guess nobody's going to get close enough to this painting to count the the feathers and make sure that they're in the right place but this I feel is important solely due to the fact that I am learning and so the best way to learn is to mimic as closely as possible and then go from there so all right so we have some you are most welcome I am so glad to have you on the stream have a great evening day wherever you are in the world and Gracias, Ana. Gracias. Thank you so much for popping in, for saying hello. Always for your kind encouragement.
I appreciate it. <laughs> I feel you, Natasha. I feel you. Honestly, even as the artist, I'm waiting for that. I do think the lion is the one for me. Like, I think I'm going to frame him and keep him. Um, so that's, that's one right now that is kind of on my... That kind of screams at me, but... Okay, whoops. So there is some of the detail in the snout, or I know birds don't have snouts, but you can kind of see those feathers. That will kind of lay in and we'll start doing some detail work around that. Um, so I think the next thing I want to do is go in and put in, um, the some of the detail around the eyeball using some of that same color but okay let's see if we can get a good shape on this eyeball don't have a lot of room for error so let's try to make sure we do it right the first time huh Oh, yeah, be careful. So you're kind of spastic hand movements, especially when there's a paintbrush on the end of them. We'll just make that a happy little error as our good friend Bob Ross was known to say, we're all mistakes. Okay. And I want to start putting the eyeball in Okay, let's see. This, it's crazy because this is a detail brush, but it's almost too big. I'm trying to. So 
I found that if you mess up the eye, I imagine it's the same with a human, but if you mess up the eye, it is, for an animal, it messes up the whole painting because it just looks, something is just off. But if you get the eye relatively correctly, then you're Now I'm just going in and putting some detail highlight around the eye to try to um, eventually this will lighten up. And draw, hopefully draw people's eye toward the or this section of the of the painting. If we de-emphasize the other sections, then we can emphasize this section and pull people right into the painting.
a two drink gig. That's amazing. What an important insight. Hey y'all, for future reference, my painting live streams are a two drink gig per Bob G who I have on that I would trust as an authority on the subject. That's amazing, Bob G. <laughs> I love it. A two drink gig. Thank you. Yeah. I'm, I'm up for it. Two drinks. Well, I have had almost two, well, I have two cups of water, so yes. Cheers. I don't, probably this would be much more entertaining if I were drinking, but for y'all, I don't know that the results would be particularly been, or particularly good if I were drinking. So I guess I will sadly sadly uh, just stay hydrated with my water. If I were to drink, I'd probably fall asleep after like 10 minutes. So that's not a good plan either. Okay. So we added some white highlights there. Isn't it interesting how the undertones of that kind of reddish pink, like when you add the white highlights on top, really draw the eye into the, the center of where we want the viewer to look. So that's what we have so far. Now we need to go in and add some more of these simple details. Let me mix some of this kind of a, see if I can add a little tan gray. So some shadow, nope, not dark enough. Let's put some shadows in here. These are the types of details that will only, they will be visible from a distance or they'll make a difference at a distance, but not necessarily up close. Also, this is a great time to mix in and do some work on the beak, the beak, the beak. Ooh. Too much.
Okay, now let's see if we can take some of this dark. That's not going to work. It's way too bright. Bright, bright, bright. So, and I put too much paint out here, but we'll see. Okay, here we go. I think this is dark enough. Yeah. So All right, the beak looks a little smushed to me. Doesn't have the right. Quite the right angle. So maybe we can fix it. Or not, we might end up making it worse. Let's see what we can do. I don't know. Ugh. Okay. Now I want to come in to see what I'm dealing with. I'm going to do a yellow or a white kind of gray, white and blue, basically. I'm going to come in. And do the highlight along the upper ridge of the beak. So right here, there is a bright, bright, Um, it almost needs to be a, let's do a lighter blue, but no, nope, that's too blue. Okay. I think, let's see, see what we can do. Mm. 
then we got to kind of fix it. Figure it out as we go. Figure it out. Figure it out. Okay. There, I think we got it. So if we bring this shiny bit and wrap it around the beak so it disappears, it will give us hopefully a well shaped beak. I think we're getting there. What do y'all think? Am I obsessing too much? Sometimes you can look at something too much and then it's like you're seeing things that aren't real. We have about 10 minutes left, so let's see how much we can get done in 10 minutes. Help me. Okay. Sorry. There we go. Now y'all can see a little better, I think. Um, oh, and here's one of the, I wanna go in here. I noticed I missed a rather prominent. Rather prominent.
You're always right. Miss Lola, you're always right. Yes. Yes, because when I sit back, even when I look at it across the room on the screen at what you're looking at, I'm like, oh, yeah, this is right. This is what I'm going for. It looks right. It makes me happy. So, now... Let's go in and see if we can add some. Details. Oops. That's a pretty, that's a really pretty green. Doesn't look as pretty on the screen, but it is pretty green. So let's take that green, mix in some yellow. See if we can do just some most brightest sections of the
thanks so much for staying so long, Daniel. Yes, get yourself some dinner. That sounds amazing. I appreciate you so much popping in and saying kind things and your kind encouragement. Hey, Mom and Dad. Welcome, welcome here at the end. How was the uh, Christmas tree burning festival? Did they have all the fireworks they typically have? Sounds like an exciting evening and a fun evening. Very cool, very cool.
Thanks so much for stopping by, Bob. Have a great evening. And we will catch up soon. We are coming to the end of time. Usually I don't like to stay much longer. At least keep you all on the hook. <laughs> I know you aren't, but um, So I'm really starting to be pleased with what is happening. I'm going to do some more detail work, and I'll show you all next week. Um, or you can connect with me on Instagram to see the progress photos. But I think I'm at a good stopping place. I'm going to do... Um, I'm really happy you can see the, the detail. Like, I just put some, like, unformed brush strokes in different directions, but it really gives the effect of um the and even this undercoat gives the effect of the feathers so i don't need to get super specific on that um the face i think is a really good um the details good enough on the face and like when i look at this it really draws me in to this spot where i really wanted this highlight here the highlight on the beak um and then the gradient behind draws the eye straight up here into this beautiful part and these colors are bright i'm gonna do some more probably work in here um and maybe some more here but not a whole lot um yeah i'm i'm kind of pleased where this is going so um thanks Thanks so much, Lola. Always, always, always. Your your encouragement means so much. Um, you were here from the beginning. You Really, when I started live streaming, you were one of the first um, people to join me outside of my immediate friends and family. So it means a lot, uh, your continued encouragement and, um, and just being able to grow as an artist with you and see your, your work and, and the... Uh, the cool things you're doing um, always brightens my day when I log on to Instagram and can see new work. So I am going to wrap down this evening. Um, I appreciate all of you. Let me just bring this out and uh, take this off kind of say thank you for joining me. Um, I appreciate all of you each one of you for joining me, sticking alongside of me, chatting with me, giving me suggestions, um, giving me perspective, really. I mean, that's one of the things in art that's so important is perspective um, that I wouldn't normally have or wouldn't otherwise have. So I deeply appreciate all of you. Look forward to seeing you. You can uh, join us every Saturday evening, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time for the weekend paint party. 
I have started also producing weekly videos. I uh, usually go up on Monday with just some perspectives I'm gaining from the process of learning to paint. Um, not necessarily related to art, but using art as a context for my own um, you know, personal development process and, and growth. So yeah, that is, that is, uh, that is kind of what's going on on my channel. Uh, if you aren't subscribed, please do so, so you can keep notified of any uh, videos that I post as we go along. And uh, I appreciate you joining me on this journey. Have a great evening, and uh, I will see you next time on the Paint Party live stream. Have a good night, everybody.